the electoral process is an ideal and integral part of the democratic process, whether in a developed or a developing nation. A malfunctioning electoral system inadvertently pro uh, produces maladministration or bad governance. With the Electoral Act of 2022, which President Mohamed Buhari finally signed into law this year, and its many process-specific provisions, Nigerians expect to have better elections come 2023. However, the ghost of June 12 annulment continues to hang over hopes and expectations. Not necessarily about a possible annulment, but there are indications of plans to ambush the electoral process and cause some of the innovations of the Electoral Act of 2022 to be abandoned. Well, joining us live to discuss this is Achike Chude. He is a public affairs analyst. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chude, for joining us. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's uh, same here to Marianne. Great. Let's look at this. I mean, you obviously uh, have observed elections over and over again. You work with civil society organizations, and so you know the ins and outs of you know our electoral processes for as long as you've been around for. Um, let's start by looking at the questions that are looming, the questions that people are asking about you know politicians and and those who do not necessarily want the electoral act of 2022 to hold sway um, looking for ways or avenues to um stop the use of beavers uh in the coming elections have you had that kind of you know um concern yeah well it's the nature and character of uh, politicians especially politicians that we have gotten used to uh, we know that uh, these uh, politicians are not powered by any altruistic uh, purposes. Uh, they are not, uh, from my own you know, perspective, you know, they are not patriotic and they are not you know, committed to the uh, development uh, you know, of uh, the nation state. Uh, and that is why uh, they look for every opportunity to subvert you know, every legal process, electoral process uh, for political gain. And so it will not be untoward that, um, and that's why some of us have to be, or all of us have to be extra vigilant, because they are always looking for loopholes to exploit. And then if they don't see loopholes, they try to create one so that they could exploit it for, you know, political advantage. You know, and, and so it is in their nature, it is in their character. I do not uh, forget that um, um, uh, Atahiru Jaga, you know, when he was living, when he, he had served the second term and was living as INEC uh, National Commissioner, he was quite embittered about the actions of uh, the politicians. And he said that the politicians are the weak link, the major weak link in our electoral process. Uh, you know, because they do everything they can to subvert the process. Uh, they do everything, you know, to, you know, ensure that uh, elections... Uh, uh, are, are conducted, you know, on their own terms, uh, you know. So this has been uh, the problem. So it will not, it will not be untoward for the politicians to do what they have always done. Obviously, a lot of them are not happy with certain provisions of uh, the Electoral Act, especially that 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 has to do with uh, the use of beavers machine, and then the transmission, you know, of uh, the electronic transmission of uh, votes as soon as they take place. Uh, they see this scenario as a nightmare scenario, contrary or you know, uh, you know, to the one that uh, they have been used to, that they have used for about 20 years in this country to survive the process, and that is the manual, you know, electoral process, uh, which uh, is uh, somewhere along the line is uh, sabotaged and cut short by the deployment of uh, thugs, uh, you know, and uh, all manners of miscreants. Uh, to do away with votes that are already, uh, you know, counted, uh, you, you know, either for the purpose of stuffing it or just absolutely doing away with those votes when they are cast in areas where specific political individuals are not popular. So this has been their nature, actually. Judiciary and concerns also, um, you know, in that direction. Many people have said that the judiciary... Um, needs to take on its own sort of or form of activism, being that uh, there's this saying that to every politi to, to be a good politician, you must have somebody on the bench as a friend, meaning that they can be bought off. They can, these judgments can be gotten at any time to favor politicians. And what does that say about, you know, the optimism, the level of optimism we have going into this election as opposed to 
what these people think they know about the judiciary and how it could play in their favor? Yeah, well, we, we, what is to be known about the judiciary is already known. Uh, we know that uh, the judiciary is a uh, part of uh, the of Nigeria. Uh, when you talk about a lot of things, a lot of anomalies, a lot of things that have gone on that have gone wrong in this country, uh, it will be strange to exclude uh, the judiciary because they are part of uh, the process, uh, you know. And um, I, I think I remember some years back uh, that it was eminent uh, jurists, uh, jurist uh, Kayo Kayo show, you know, and. Uh, and Dr. Babalola that talked about um, at an event, you know, I think in Abuja also, when they were talking about, uh, you know, the kind of uh, monies that are being made uh, by justices of uh, the courts uh, due to an election petition tribunals, where you have politicians that are willing that see election as a do or die, you know, uh, struggle, and that are willing to spend billions of naira uh, to buy cases, you know, and so they, they say that, yes, that, um, some of these uh, judges had actually made become, you know, billionaires overnight. And this is what we have always seen. So, uh, obviously, in the calculation to manipulate uh, the electoral process or the political process, uh, the judiciary, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's part of the calculation of uh, the politicians that if they fail at a certain stage in the electoral process, they can always seek recourse uh, to the courts. And then the courts, you know, seek recourse uh, to specific uh, judges who might be posted to handle certain cases involving them, knowing that they can always count on the on the relationship that exists as a result of the financial inducements uh, for the judges uh, to make rulings in a particular uh, you know in a, in a particular way. This has gone on in this country for so long. We have seen you know the contradictions of a uh, judicial uh, declarations in this country where you have courts of a coordinated jurisdiction in you know, weighing into matters that are that have already been been, been delivered by courts of uh, the same status uh, you know contrary to the spirit of uh, stare decisis you know so these are some of the uh, issues and then the judiciary is neck deep in this but that is not to say again uh, that uh, we do not have a uh, brilliant people uh, people of integrity within the judiciary and we have them, and, and you know, we have them, but I think, unfortunately, well, they say that the uh, bad news tends to travel, uh, you know, much faster. And so you have a situation where the very few good ones might be damaging, uh, causing serious damage to uh, others that uh, try to keep their hands clean. And, and so you cannot uh, exempt, you cannot remove the judiciary from the wrath that is happening. And why is it, you know, happening? Even the, 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 some, some judges in the past have had cause to, you know, be, you know, admonish politicians, you know, and the INEC to act in ways and manners that ensure that um, a votes count at the, at, the, at the polling booths and that it is the votes of the people that determine the outcome of elections and not the declarations by judges, you know, who did not participate in this election as voters. Uh, you know, and so that has always been uh, the issue. Votes, you know, winners have to be decided, you know, at the polling booths and not at the courts. You know, but again, when the process, something goes wrong with the process, there is a remedial, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a policy more or less that such matters must get to the uh, a judiciary for adjudication. So in, in cases where these things are not settled at the polling units, the only other place, rather than to get people to resort to self-help, is to take the matter to the judiciary with the hope that judiciary will do the right thing. Okay. Let's talk about why Nigerians need to be concerned today. There are those of us who pushed for, you know, this amendment of the Electoral Act and pushed for certain, you know, adjustments. But then it seems like many people have gone to sleep. Many people don't even know, you know, what what is even contained in, in you know, in the whole act in itself. Um, so, what kind of inf level of information do we need to put out? Um, there's there's also been a call for citizen activism also um, to hold sway if we must have the kind of elections that we're expecting in 2023. What are CSOs doing? What should political yeah. parties be doing? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. should well, the media well, be doing? Yeah, you see, while, while it is, it should be very good for, 
uh, as many citizens, as many voters as uh, possible to have a clearer understanding of uh, the electoral act that puts them in a better position to properly assess uh, the whole government of the election itself and to also have an idea when certain things are going wrong. But it is not a given, it's not a must that everybody must equip themselves with that knowledge. I think the knowledge, you know, that uh, the vast majority of citizens uh, should have is the knowledge of their patriotic duties and which is to also to, to take part in the process, you know, in the registration process and to make sure that they make themselves available on the day of election, uh, you know, to cast their vote and to, to as much as and as much as is possible to also wait around to see that INEC officials do their own part. You know, because these things have a way. The more people turn up at polling units, the more, you know, miscreants and political thugs are discouraged from invading such places because of the sheer number of the people, you know, that are there. You know, so obviously we had a lot of, uh, we had a major victory, especially civil society uh, activists and campaigners who had worked assiduously to ensure that we had a new electoral act passed by the National Assembly and signed by the president of this country. That has happened. But we know that you cannot go to sleep. Because somebody has said that the price we have to pay for democracy is eternal vigilance. You know, so we must be ever watchful of our democracy. Uh, obviously, you know, there are, you know, uh, uh, like I said, uh, you, you know, there are always uh, grounds for mischief, uh, you know, by the political elites. And that is why we have to be watchful. We have seen what people have been saying about the use of beavers. Uh, the, the, the revelations that we had from, um, I think, COP, the Conference of uh, Political Parties in Nigeria, about possible you know, manipulation in a place like Imo State. And uh, I think Onya Gocha, a former member of the House of Representatives, also talked about that. And then beyond that, again, we have also seen uh, attempts by some people in the media space. We don't know what, whether what they are doing is to try to test the waters telling us about uh, the viability of uh, the of beavers you know uh, uh, you know uh, in in about uh, 40 or 60 percent of the states in this country making the argument that network there might be network difficulties in those other places we all know that the, ter the politicians are terrified of beavers because we have been in the field and we have seen how effective beavers you know has been so it is a nightmare of the crooked politician uh, who is not willing to sell himself adequately to the public, you know, to the voting public, to convince them about his credibility, you know, and uh, his ability uh, to 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 handle, you know, elected political office properly on their behalf. So what they do is to look for a way to try to get into the back door, you know. And so, but but beyond that is the fact that we are optimistic on the basis of uh, the recent elections that uh, we have had. And we have seen the success. We have seen INEC, you know, try to uh, get better at, um, you know, uh, what they have, what what they have done. In, in some cases in the past, we have seen them fail outrightly. But there have been noticeable improvements in the way INEC has conducted, you know, elections in some parts of uh, this, of the country. So we need to continue to engage the process. We need to continue to respond to those people who are just looking for ways not to to ensure that uh, INEC does not uh, use uh, the beavers. You cannot give us that, uh, whatever explanation you are giving us, an excuse that it is security-based. Because if, if security, for instance, does not allow the use of beavers in many parts of this country, it simply means another massive failure on the part of this government that has failed on so many other areas. And I have made the argument, the president did promise the international community on the floor of uh, the United Nations General Council, the very last time, you know, he went when he went there to say goodbye, he said that he was going to ensure that this country would have a credible election. Having, in my own estimate, you know, been unable for whatever reason to fulfill the promises he made to Nigerians about addressing the problems of the economy, the problem of insecurity and corruption in this country, the president has a unique opp opportunity to get it right, you know, uh, with regards to this election and to do what his predecessor had done, organize an election that removed him from power. 
And that is why Jonathan continues to be a very popular president, not just in Nigeria, but in the continent of Af West Africa, I mean, in the sub-region West Africa and the continent of Africa. We are not necessarily saying that the president must do the same thing, organize an election that will remove you and your political party from power. We are saying organize an election that is seen to be credible, transparent, ac transparent accountable, free, and fair. And when he has done that, Regardless of his many other failures in, you know, in other, I mean, in, 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 his, in the responsibilities or the promises that he made to the Nigerian people, people are going to remember him for an election that was well conducted. So that is what we have to keep on reminding them, that elections have held even in security, you know, uh, 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 insecurity prone areas in this country. Virtually many parts of the country have held elections. So there should not be any excuse for an election not to be held in many parts of this country. If that happens, it will be one more failure of President Muhammad Buhari, one more failure of his party, the All Progressive Congress, the APC. Well, uh, on that note, we want to say thank you. Chike Chude is a public affairs analyst. Uh, like I said to my other guests, uh, we'll all be saying our Hail Marys and hoping for the best. Thank yeah. you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. And thank you all for joining us. That's the show tonight. But don't forget, you can watch a replay on our YouTube channel. It's Plus TV Africa, our Plus TV Africa lifestyle. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. You can get more stories on our website at plustvafrica.com. My name is Mary Anakon. Don't forget to get your PVC because it is your passport to the new Nigeria that you deserve. But before I go, I would like to give you my take. Here's my take. Now, in a globalized world where countries are linked diplomatically and economically, it's hard for a nation to hide its struggles and triumphs. As much as we might wish that we could live our lives without being beholden to societal eyes, the perception others have of us affects our lives. So when we consider the impact that our problems as a nation has on us, we should remember that the world is always watching. Now, Nigeria currently faces trillions of naira in debt with no visible way of paying that down. And we continue to incur more of these with no end in sight as our leaders continue to borrow just to pay off our bills. It's like taking loan from a bank, you know, with 5% interest rate, knowing that we chip away at the perception that we may or are a viable investment. Ultimately, that eroded perception affects the value of our currency. And when that loan comes due, we ask a different bank for a loan. We double the interest rate that, you know, just to pay off the other bank loan. Even pyramid schemes have a greater rate of success than the model that we are employing in this country. If our leaders were CEOs of a company that had failed to generate any profit for decades, we as the board members would have to consider filing for bankruptcy and shutting it all down. And maybe that's just what you know our generous creditors are hoping for so that they can buy us up in pieces or for cobbles instead of naira and we as nigerians must fight that i am mary anakon have a good night <laughs>